Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing 21 questions makeup edition. This is a really fun tag started by the lovely Ali Glines. Yeah, let's just get into it. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Taking a step back from talking about new makeup and Ali Glines created a really fun tag where we just get to answer 21 questions and talk about makeup, talk about makeup experiences, our thoughts in the makeup industry, all of that. Ali was kind enough to tag me, but of course you don't need to be tagged to do this. So if this sounds like something fun to you, if you have your own channel, definitely do this video. Or if you don't, just comment down below, answer the questions for yourself, see what it is. So anyways, let's get started to the questions. If you are interested in doing this, I will have all the questions linked down below as well as the link to the original creator of this, Ali Glines. Number one, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? Mine, I believe, is my good old MAC palette. <laughs> I have my stickers on it and I have some old, old shadows in here. Brulee, as you can see, was my right hand man. So all of these are shadows from MAC that I had built over a couple of years as a very young teenager. Of course, when I first started getting into makeup, it was the bloom of YouTube makeup videos and MAC was popping. So every time I could convince my mom to buy an eyeshadow for me, I would pick up like one or two MAC eyeshadows at the time. So I would say the oldest eyeshadow in here is this shadow right here. It is so disgusting. Where'd it go? Oh. <laughs> it is so disgusting and dried out. This is Trax. It's like a plum with a gold shift to it. My goal one day is to recreate this palette with all new uh, fresh shadows, but this holds so much memories to me. Every shadow in here I feel like has a story. It has to be the oldest shadow. I was like 13 or 14, so almost 10 years old. And yeah, we got some good ones. I have all that glitters here. I have, I know this one is a popular one. What is it called? Or was a popular one. Just satin taupe. We have some good ones in here. I would absolutely love to recreate this. It's so fun. What is your most recent makeup purchase? So I got these items sent in the mail on the same day. I've already done a review, but the Natasha Denona mini love story collection. It was a bomb collection. And then also that evening, my Guerlain L'Essentiel <laughs> High Perfection Foundation. I'm wearing it on this side of my face. I'm doing a side-by-side -side comparison right now, but really bomb foundation. Number three, what is the first makeup product you ever use. I mean, thinking back to what I can remember, you know, as a kid, I loved glitter. And then I of course, lip gloss. I remember being in my dance recitals and my mom would put a Stila lip gloss on me. But as far as seriously wearing makeup, when I got into wearing makeup and I was old enough to wear makeup, it was a cheap little black eyeliner from an Ulta Christmas gift set. Highliner was popping at the time. I think I was in sixth or seventh grade and I wanted to wear black eyeliner. Not a very flattering look, but that's what I was into. Number four. What is a makeup trend that you used to love, now you hate? I do not like the look of... <laughs> And it's not necessarily about wearing it, it's about the artistry behind it, but I hate like the multiple cut creases, the pictures on the eyes. I think because it's posted on Instagram, a lot of people might feel pressure to be that good at makeup, when in reality, that's just, it's not flattering. So I don't know, maybe you didn't fall into this, but I thought in the beginning when I actually first started my Instagram that I had to know how to do these double cut creases, wings. Ugh, no, no. I do not like that trend. It's pretty It's pretty to look at, but when I used to attempt it on myself, it wasn't very pretty. Number five, what is a makeup trend that you used to hate, but you now love? I don't remember what I said, because I wrote out all the answers, and this is the one that I didn't write down. What is a makeup trend that you used to hate, now you love? <laughs> A few moments later. Okay, okay, okay. No. Oh my goodness, Jose, I can't remember. Oh, okay, I remember now. Believe it or not, and if you're a regular watcher on my channel, you're not 
you're not gonna believe it. I used to hate blush. I remember having conversations with my mom asking, what is the point of blush? You put foundation on to cover the redness on your cheek just to add it back on. But now I'm a huge blush fanatic. The more blush, the better. I'll put it on the bridge of my nose, everything, all different colors. Now I see why you need blush and I think it's so important to wear blush. It adds color to your face. You can choose what color. It matches the eyes, to the lips, just pulls everything together. I'm obsessed with blush. But there was a time back in the day that I did not understand why blush was a thing. Phony, phony, phony. <laughs> Number six, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? Eyeshadow, of course. Now, as far as what is satisfactory to me, like when I put it on, I'm like, yes, I'm a new person. It's concealer. But the most fun step in my makeup routine that I look forward to the most is eyeshadow because I have such a deep love for eyeshadow and seeing what color combinations I can create and what look I can create. I don't necessarily think my eyeshadow looks are always the most flattering, but it's a creative outlet for myself so it's definitely eyeshadow adding on glitter all over to the eyelid I love it number seven what is a makeup product that you cannot live without eyebrow products like my eyebrows are in a very bad state right now because I haven't gotten them done in a year like this eyebrow is lower than <laughs> than the other eyebrow so my eyebrow products helped me in that and I just feel like especially with masks you can look all worn down and you know not in your best form but as soon as you just add a little bit of fill in your eyebrows a little bit of shape it changes your whole face so I can't live without eyebrow product I cannot what sparked your love for makeup I've said this before but my mom has always also been very in to makeup in a heavy way like I am now but I think my first memory as far as me getting into make wearing makeup for myself other than just growing up around it was I got a makeup set for Christmas and I was interested in wearing it. So I remember going onto YouTube and finding a tutorial of how to apply eyeliner from Makeup Geek or Marlena Stell now. That was like over 10 years ago. I was into YouTube in the very, very, very beginning stages of makeup. Like, Fafina X3 was my favorite. Encore makeup. Was it Purse Buzz? Panacea? I can't remember the numbers behind her name, but if you remember any of those names, you are also a true OG of makeup YouTube. Um, number nine, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? I mean, we go through phases, I feel like, and what looks good to us then, we're now like, doesn't look good to us now, but there was one makeup look semi-recently that I did with the Raw Beauty Christie palette and Pure collaboration. It was not a cute look. I knew it wasn't, but I had to film a video, so I went on camera anyways, and the false lashes that I chose really weighed down my eyes, and those colors were just so dark and gross looking on my eyelid. I did not feel pretty with that look. I felt like a parrot. That was the worst one I've done recently. What is your favorite makeup look you've ever done? That one was really, really hard for me. There's been a lot of makeup looks that I've really loved. I would say semi-recently, I absolutely was feeling myself with the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 look that I created where it was a little bit more neutral colors. First of all, I was proud of myself for getting a more neutral look with that palette because it was so colorful but I added a lot of really smoky elements from the false lashes to a lot of black on the lower lash line, but still some brightness. I added a little bit of a cut crease. Between my hair, my outfit, the makeup, the lashes, that whole look itself, I was feeling myself with that. So that's one that just kind of comes to mind when I think about that. What is your favorite drugstore makeup product? By far. The Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. It is the most smoothing powder ever. It adds a little bit of coverage. I actually patted on quite a lot today on my under eyes. It just like fills in the lines in your skin and makes it look soft and supple like baby skin. I mean, a lot of other people love this product as well. I just don't get how you couldn't like this product. It's my favorite from the drugstore. 
What is your favorite splurge makeup product? You guys know I splurge a lot on makeup. And of course, it has to be any Pat McGrath Labs Mothership palettes. Now, I pulled out the Divine Rose too, but really any single one of these in particular is really nice. This one is very special to me because I love, love, love the packaging. It will be available on Sephora soon in case you're interested. And the colors in here are beautiful, but I feel the same equally about every other Mothership palette in my collection. These are over a hundred dollars they're crazy but the experience of applying it opening it the looks that you get worth every single penny it's it is a splurge but it's like i'm i'm gonna buy it one that comes out no matter what it's not a question what is your most repurchased makeup product so i have two one is a more recent product that i've been purchasing a lot which is in the last couple of years the pat mcgrath labs fetish eyes mascara i always need to have one of these in my collection i love the way that it adds volume to my lashes and it just makes me look like i have a million eyelashes when i really only have 10 in reality so this is one of my all-time favorite mascaras i have to have this in my collection and i repurchase it a lot because i always buy it when it's on sale um and then also as far as like my whole time ever having a makeup collection it's always been the Too Faced eyeshadow insurance i always have one of these in my collection now maybe i don't repurchase them anymore because i find myself able to get them in samples or as gift with purchases but it's something that i always 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 have in my makeup collection i always run out of and i always have at least a backup ready to go number 14 what is your earliest makeup memory i mean i just remember staring at my mom with all of her makeup like that's it number 15 what is your favorite place to shop for makeup sephora hands down now i love ulta because we got a lot of variety there but as far as store both online and in person sephora has the best brands in my opinion the best displays i don't like having you know sales people follow me around taking steps with me to purchase items i like being left alone at sephora to my own devices and of course they have the best brands number 16 what is the most underrated makeup product you own for me, that is the Nabla Cosmetics Smoothing Pressing Powder, or Pressed Powder, Smoothing Pressed Powder. This is amazing. It reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Pressed Powder, but it adds a little bit more coverage. It's a little bit more loose packed than the Charlotte Tilbury so it's a bit more powdery but in the best way in that it really smooths the skin it gives you extra coverage and I just think it's amazing it's like a pore blur in a powder and nobody ever talks about this because everybody likes like the Nabla eyeshadow palettes but this is a gem number 17 what is the most overrated makeup product you own Oof, some of you are gonna come for me but the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, it does not work for my lashes. I thought this was going to make a miracle happen because it really does work for some people's lashes, but for me, it was so overrated. It didn't do anything for my lashes. It did make them longer, but they were still very, very thin. Like, I still only had five eyelashes on my eyes, and it just made them longer, but because... This is a personal problem, <laughs> but my eyelashes are so straight, it just made them look, like, pokey. And, yeah, it was... I was disappointed with it. Now, I guess maybe it's not overrated, but it, I was so disappointed to me that it was overrated. I thought it was, I thought I was gonna get a new set of eyelashes with this or something. Number 18, what is a discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? So I have two. The first one Allie mentioned, which was the ABH Makeup by Mario collaboration palette. I would love to get a fresh one of that because obviously by now it's expired even though we all still use it if we have it. The most beautiful wearable colors, easy to throw on, best formula. And then another one that I'm sad was discontinued is the Viseart Liaison palette. Now they did come out with kind of a version two of this if you will this year and it is a very very nice but it still is not the same as this one there's something extra special about the formula here the color story here I think is a little bit better and like I said I still like the new one that they came out with but this one is still better I just wish it was still available for you guys to get a hold of because it's amazing number 19 where do
do you go for makeup inspiration? That is always going to be Instagram for me. And I toggle between a few different accounts that I will go to for inspiration. I would say Charlotte Tilbury is one of my favorites for inspiration. Danessa Myricks, and then I also really like following celebrity makeup artists. I love Selena Gomez's makeup artist. I don't, I'm not gonna say his name right, but I think it's like Hung Van Gogh. Uh, so I always follow when celebrities tag their makeup artists. I always follow their makeup artists because I just love the looks the makeup artist creates. And half of it is their model is just so beautiful. But any makeup artist page I can get a hold of, I will follow. I'm not into super crazy Instagram accounts that Mama Mitchell, <laughs> his stuff is so good. But it doesn't really inspire me because it's not a look that I would ever create. I like looking at accounts that have more wearable looks that you would actually wear out. Patrick Ta is also a really good one. He's big though. Number 20, what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? Now, as far as trend, I wrote down feather brows. I hate feather brows. I'm so sorry if you love feather brows. Like, if you do, you do you, girl. Some people can rock it, but I cannot stand when people's brows are just straight up. Every single brow hair, you look windblown. Like, <laughs> This is not a personal attack. If you like it, you like it. But for myself, like, you see how my brows go this way? Maybe I'm just jealous. But I just, I hate the look of, like, you took a glue stick and you just put it straight up. I don't... <laughs> I think people took it a little bit too far. Also, I guess I'll answer this with the more of. Because the last question is, what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? I wrote down the rise of indie brands because I feel like we've gotten tired of brands such as like Too Faced and Smashbox. There's just some brands that were once so popular and didn't get so pop. They're not so popular anymore because they just came out with the same stuff. They stuck to really only working with a certain group of influencers that really... I don't know, I don't care to watch and their products have been continuously uninspiring. I would love to see indie brands make a rise because they come up with the most unique color stories. People complain that makeup is really repetitive now, there's nothing exciting. I really think that's because they're not looking in the right places and there's only a very small niche community that knows of these indie brands, but that is the future of the makeup. If you are saying you are bored of the products that are out right now, you're not looking in the right places. Sydney Grace, Terra Moons, Davina, uh, what's the other, Cleona. I would love to see them come to rise because they have the best formulas too, way better than luxury brands as well, it's crazy. Um, and then also, ah, more of, in the makeup community, this is kind of less of or more of, but for the most part, of course there are a few exceptions, but I feel like as far as my makeup community on YouTube in general, the really, really popular people with millions of followers, they just don't catch me as people who truly love makeup, love formulations. I see myself as somebody who is in love with the makeup market and sharing how formulas work, how colors are put together, education. I feel like the bigger ones are influencers are more for entertainment. They don't really care about the actual makeup and obviously they're doing something right. They've reached a very high level of success, but I don't know. I'm just like tired of, I don't give a rat's butt about the makeup drama. Like I don't. People ask me opinions and why I don't talk about it. It's because I don't give a crap. I want to tell you about this new Pat McGrath palette. So I just wish people would focus less on the drama that's happening, but of course it is entertainment, I understand. But as somebody who really is here because I just like makeup, I like talking about makeup, I would love to see people who have more similar channels to mine have a little bit more success because I truly believe we are here for the right reasons and we don't get enough love. Like, people are looking into the wrong parts of the community because obviously the bigger ones are easier to find, but when it comes to if you actually want to know about makeup and you're watching those people, you're watching the wrong people. So I would just like to see a little bit of a shift in the sense of community and who gets attention and who doesn't because at the end of the day, if you talk about the drama, they're just going to get more and more attention. Did you, do we understand that if we don't talk about it, then they just go away into the distance. So I think 
I don't know. I don't really like drama channels. I'm sorry. I, I do like Smokey Glow. She's the one that I'll watch. But can we just talk about makeup? Okay. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Anyways, so that was a really fun tag. I hope you guys enjoyed my answers. Let me know your answers down below. Thank you so much to Allie for creating this tag. I just love getting to sit down and talk. And yeah. Alright, thank you guys for watching. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking this time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.